Bill and Barbara Eswaller. I'm sorry? And Mrs. DiCilio. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Four point oh one. If anybody wants to speak on any agenda item, please come forward, sign up with this uh district clerk. And if you want to speak on any other item, you can also that's a second sheet. So uh, so please sign up so you can be called to address any item on the agenda. Thank you. Uh Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to listen to public comment. Although state law does not require us to hold a public comment period, we have chosen to do so because we believe it is crucial for us to hear from our community members about their concerns and issues. The board is here to listen. The public comment period is not just doesn't designed to be a debate or dialogue. Please do not expect the board to respond to your concerns and questions tonight. We take your concerns and questions seriously, and we have time, sufficient time to process and research issues if need be. Any question from the public should be submitted through the use of a public comment form, which may, which may be obtained online or at the clerk with the, at the district clerk. We have the proper staff member get back to you as appropriate. I also want to point out that under state and federal privacy laws, we are unable to address any comments or questions about specific students or school personnel. We would ask you to go through the appropriate administrative channels. A total of 30 minutes at the beginning of each board meeting set aside to allow public comments on agenda items only. Public comments at the beginning of the meeting is limited only to agenda items. Persons who wish to participate in public comment portion of the meeting are asked to provide their name and specific agenda item by which they wish to speak. I set up sheets located at the desk. Individual comments and items as limited to three minutes and are welcomed. If you wish to address items related to our school district that are not in tonight's agenda, another comment period is provided at the end of the meeting for that purpose. A second sign-up sheet is available for non-agenda items. In the interest of civility and respect for different points of view, clapping, booing, or any disturbance or disruption during either public comment period is not permitted. Are there anyone who was signed up for comment? Seeing none, uh, communication announcement received by the Board of Education. Marie? I know you were shocked that I was going to say something, right? Oh, come on. I knew you were going to say something. <laughs> as, as I said, I'm the superintendent. I got a hook for the superintendent. So no, you, you can't have a hook for him. <laughs> Gully, Gully Sanford over at Duchess uh, Bosey's has that now. He has the hook. We're, we're having it created. Um, <laughs> that being said, um, I was able to attend the lobby day in Albany. Um, I was also able to attend John J. French Honor Society in Junction. The John Jay girls basketball team was able to make it uh, through the quarterfinals, um, but they did not succeed to make it onto the semis. Royce Ketchum girls basketball team, who has moved on to the semifinals, will be playing this Thursday down at All County in, I believe it's White Plains, and I can't wait to be down there at the county center, and I can't wait to be down there to be able to cheer them on. It's been very fun to watch most of their games this year and towards the end of the season less things happening it's a lot easier to get to more games um, Royce Ketchum had their Indian Rumble cheerleading um, where Van White Junior High School took first in modified John Jay took uh, JV took first in traditional um, John Jay Varsity took first in large school small team and John Jay took first in game day kind of swept everything they were in it was great Great to see that. Um, our Royce Ketchum did participate as a exhibition because they were hosting it. They were not able to actually compete in it. Um, I also stopped by the John Jay uh, Robotics that they had the same day. That was also a great thing. That's a uh, it's a really great program, and I'm really glad that Dr. Baum's going to be uh, adding some more money to that so that they can expand that program. It's been really good, and it was really, really impressive. 
This past Saturday, I was able to go to Section 1 Cheer. It was held at Mahopak High School, and I want to thank them for hosting Section 1. Um, we did have some all leagues announced that uh, competed uh, from John J. Veronica Dickman, Sophia Devine, Stephanie Sampson, Mia Eded, Caitlin Morin, Kara Morin, Sophia Shocker, and from Maurice Ketchum, Araya Moore, and Jenna Delera um, made the all leagues. And then out of those, they went on to all section was Sophia Shocker from John Jay, Kara Morin from John Jay, Arara Moore from Marissi Ketchum, and Caitlin Morin from John Jay as well. Um, I want to congratulate Matthew Marsh on his performance in Albany at State this past weekend. And I want to thank all the teachers, the coaches, and the Support, support staff as long as well as the families that put in their time with all of our students, both music and the honor societies and everything else. It's, it's a lot of time that you guys put in for your students. And I want to thank Presidium and Mask in Mind because all of these different performances, they come in and they help out with all the sound and the lighting for all the honor societies and stuff as, lo as well as the school photographers. So that's mine today. <laughs> Peggy. Okay. Um, Marie and I missed the Math Honor Society induction because we were at the lobby day. But the French Honor Society uh, induction uh, even had entertainment by Procinium. A musical group sang in, uh, in French. <laughs> they were very good. The um, basketball games, we uh, managed to catch a little of both. And uh, the John Jay fought very hard if they went into uh, seesawed back and forth and went into overtime but unfortunately uh, they did, the other team uh, did a little better. Uh, Ketchum however uh, romped to a few, uh, win, win, an easy win so congratulations to the girls. Show. Okay, I'd like to start out by saying um, it was a little bit of nostalgia for me to attend the the rumble with the um, cheerleaders at Ketchum the other weekend. Uh, brought back a lot of memories of sitting in the bleachers at cheerleading events every weekend. And I just want to congratulate the RCK Cheer Program on a wonderful, well-run program, despite all of the, the last-minute changes that came in. I also want to say that um, I was in attendance at both basketball games last Thursday. I attended the, the first half of the game at John Jay, and I want to say that that basketball game between um, John Jay and the Ursuline School was one of Texas. the most exactly intensive um well-fought basketball games i've seen ever and also want to add my congratulations to the rck girls team unfortunately because of my class schedule i will not be there to see them play on thursday but i'm hoping that they will be there on saturday or on sunday so that i can go and cheer them on to a section championship i also learned a lot at the um, robotics event at john jay high school got to speak to um, Mr. Amadio and some of the parents and learned about some of the um, the ways they're looking at expanding the program going forward. And I spent Saturday following, uh, Friday and Saturday following Matt Mosh um, through the brackets at States. And I want to congratulate him on an excellent season. He wrestled beautifully in his opening match. Unfortunately, in his second match, he came up against the uh, the number one seed in the tournament. But he still uh, continued to do himself and the district proud in his in his efforts at states. Anyone else, uh, Mr. Morgan? Thank you, President Lumia. A um, couple of things that I was. Uh, uh, both pleased to attend and happy that I had attended, um, and several have been referenced already. 
Um, I attended uh, parts of two John Jay girls basketball games, uh, won a victory in the opening round of the sectionals and the, uh, the other an overtime loss that uh, the trustee Cal that, that's been spoken about. Um, uh, and then additionally, I attended, I'm not sure if they were games or not, but two clinics that the uh, Royce Ketchum girls basketball team has, has been putting on um, against, um, against their opponents. Um, they've, they've looked, uh, looked very strong. Uh, this past weekend, I was able to attend the, uh, the John Jay Winter Carnival, uh, which is an event that allows different, uh, different clubs uh, to, to have events and, uh, and fundraise and opens the, uh, the school up to the community. <coughs> uh, good job to, uh, to those students. Um, also already uh, um, referenced was the John Jay French Honor Society. Uh, the heartwarming performance. Um, thank you for mentioning that, Trustee Kellen. Um, this past, no, excuse me, a week ago this past Saturday, um, representatives of the John Jay Science Olympiad team uh, were down in Philadelphia at, uh, at Penn. Um, I believe they left John Jay at approximately three in the morning so that they could get, um, get into the building before seven to set up their lab equipment. Uh, there were schools, um, science Olympiad teams from as far west as Illinois um, that, that competed. Uh, John Jay had um, in several events, um, our students placed sixth um, or better. So we, um, while we didn't place overall, we had multiple students um, place in the, in the top six. Uh, noteworthy accomplishment. And then finally, the, uh, the Royce e. Ketchum Math, uh, Math Honor Society um, was something that, that I attended, and uh, it, was, it was good to see so many students inducted into that honor society as well. Thank you for your time. Anyone else? I guess I, I'm the last, as usual. <laughs> I hope you don't give me the hook, Dr. Bunk. I would never think. <laughs> I want to, as everybody said, I want to congratulate the J-Bus Robotics team, consistent of eight of the 18 John Jay students who will be headed to Utica on March 5th to compete in a regional tournament. Special thanks to one of the students, Anish Ane, for taking this time to show my grandson what robotics is all about. On behalf of the Board of Education, I want to thank Ian Friedman, the John Jay teacher and robotics coach, as well as New Post Professor Ping Chung Wang, and Jason Wang, who also helped. I want to thank the Robotics Booster Club, whose president is Ms. Joanne Laverdi, for providing all the food services operating for the day. I want to thank her for the providing names of all the local businesses and community members who generously donated food and items for the day. The contributors were Adams Federico Farms, Aliano Pizza and Osteria, at your service by Christine, Hopewell Hot Bagels, Pizza and Stuff Fiskill, Sharpright Fiskill, Olive Garden, Stewart Shop, Tamazoo Hopewell Junction, Walmart Fiskill, Mrs. Joanne Marino, family of both the j -Bots and Phoenix Robotics team. The contribution by everyone made this event more special. On behalf of the Board of Education, I want to thank you. I want to congratulate the RCK basketball team for events to the semifinals this Thursday at, at 3 p.m. at County Center. Congratulations to Coach Mealy and his assistant Walter Gulick for their hard work. It's unfortunate that the, the John Jay team did not, was never to advance. I guess the, the, they were tied at the, at the end of the game and unfortunately over time they lost. So, uh, but we attended, I'm surprised that, that uh, Mr. Morgan, we attended the same basketball game at, at Ketchum and uh, he, the, the morning, he had asked whether one of our former teachers, John Jay, uh, Mr. John Archimede, was going to be at the game. I said, I'll call. And, 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 and I, said, why? I said, why? He said, well, my dad wants to come. Apparently, his dad coached Mr. Archimede. And he showed up that night. And I tell you, they had a phenomenal conversation. It was great to see two individuals really care for each other. So uh, I was really fortunate to see this. So, uh, John, your dad, quite a, quite a man. You used to see him go up those stairs. He's nine, 91 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Fortunately, he's not watching this evening to know that you said that in public. <laughs> Oh, but, but, but yes. Well, I tell you, the way we went accurate. the way we went up those stairs, he looked at me like a fifty-one year old. He was bouncing up those stairs; it was incredible. <laughs> One last comment. At the last meeting, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mister Mister Morgan. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> at the last meeting, we recognized all who have been part of the district for twenty-five years. At this time, I want to recognize. 
Janet Landy, who's been a monitor of RCK for 50, 50 years. I hope that she can come at the next board meeting when she can be formally recognized. And with that, next topic <laughs> on the agenda, which is committee reports. So the first man on the line is uh, Mr. Mr. Schlossauer, as well as Mr. McFarland on capital improvement. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. We ready real quick. Uh, the, H the hook is ready. The hook is ready. All right. I, I don't get hooked. The HVAC uh, renovations project phase two, uh, thankfully to report, uh, it is complete. We just have some minor uh, closeout uh, items for this month. The phase four summer projects, which I've uh, stated previously, uh, all that work has been completed. Unfortunately, though, uh, due to the weather, we do have some minor uh, punchless items that have to be taken care of. So obviously, as soon as the weather warms up, that'll be taken care of. Quick update on our proposed capital project that was approved by the public from 2022. Phase one drawings, as I've previously stated, have been submitted to the state education department. That was done on December 7th of 2022. Uh, we have uh, decided to go ahead uh, with a third party uh, to do an expedited uh, review. Uh, which is scheduled for this month. As I previously mentioned, the state education department can take anywhere from, oh, 47 weeks and plus to approve things. Uh, makes us a little bit nervous since we have a lot of work that has to be done this summer. So again, we have previously done this in the past. We're going ahead with a third party review. Uh, our architects and uh, committee members uh, came back here, met with the principal uh, to go over the upgrades here for the auditorium. That would include the seats, uh, which was, I believe, picked out along with the color scheme, uh, as well as uh, paint colors and so forth. So I'm happy to report we're moving forward with that. Uh, we had also looked in for some bidding to upgrade the uh, audio visual uh, for the uh, auditorium as well. Uh, at the meeting, uh, we did have a suggestion from a uh, from Assistant uh, Superintendent uh, Lokima to take a look at uh, some digital backdrops, which we think would be uh, very advantageous to the productions here at the junior high. Saves a lot of logistics with having to set up, uh, you know, back in the control room. Uh, that would be something that's on stage that the kids could use. And uh, it's a very cool thing. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to get some decent bids on that uh, and uh, have that installed as well. We do anticipate having uh, the auditorium completely renovated and upgraded by the end of the summer for the start of the September 2023-2024 uh, school year. So fingers crossed, I'll continue to update everybody on that. But that is obviously the game plan. So when we return back here for meetings for next year, we should have a restored, beautiful auditorium. Uh, phase two design work, uh, which is going to be for summer of 2024. Architects are working on those uh, prints, to, excuse me, the blueprints to send up. Again, we really can't wait uh, as the Department of Education takes a very long time. Uh, also keep everyone uh, abreast of the fact that we are looking at uh, upgrading the heating system at Van Wyck Junior High. As far as some upgrades for the uh, uh, VRS heating and air conditioning systems, uh, we're taking a look at both Sheaf Road and Vassar uh, to have that installed also for the following uh, summer of 2024. Just to remind everybody that's being utilized with COVID money. So we are working with uh, Assistant Superintendent Caldwell as to how much funds we do have available for that. And the last quick thing is again, just the John Jay uh, sump pumps, that project's completed, just some minor close out uh, paperwork that has to be done. And that's it, thank you. I know that uh, the next person is uh, Dr. Kawa, but I would like if possible Mike from McFarland to speak about your visit to Virginia about electric buses, if you don't mind. Thank you, President Lumi. Uh I had a, a great opportunity to look into this uh, EV electric school buses, and uh, through some of the opportunities, I went to go to Maryland and uh, check out their district and what they're doing with electric buses. I also had the opportunity to go to Richmond, Virginia, and look at uh, their facility for electric school buses. Ohio, I went to uh, Soho, Solo, Ohio uh, last week, and I actually, uh, that was one of the locations where they let me take a couple of photos, because most of the districts won't let me take any photos. But uh, it's really a fact-finding mission, and hopefully we'll get to uh, present all of this to the board at the, a later meeting, probably in March. Uh, so right now I'm just doing fact finding, getting all the information we can get from any of the districts that operate within the electric or 
gas driven school buses just to look at all the different options you know uh, these buses have a pretty good uh, mileage rate uh, even in the cold weather they don't start dropping off from mileage until they're down to about 30 degrees uh, and I don't believe any of our routes, and I'll have to check with our uh, transportation division, would exceed any of the bus charging limitations. Other than going out to a game or something like that where you'd have a long distance run, I don't think uh, it would be an issue for electric school buses. I'm sorry? What, what's the mileage that they run? So in the, in the cold weather, they drop about 50% of their mileage, but you could start out with 190 miles with a full charge bus. 190 miles. Okay. Yeah. So you have a bus route of 70? No, but through the if they do four runs in a day. So you have 70 possible. miles. Correct. Yes. <coughs> you're still, with, you're still well, within a limitation. This be a discussion that can take place in some right. future. But I, be honest, thank you for. Uh, I'm just on a fact finding mission, trying to get all the information. And I think those will be presented to the uh, to the capital. Yeah, be presented but, to the capital. Uh, thank you for taking the initiative and go to all those places. Thank and you. My, uh, yes. Just one thing, since Trustee McFarland was bringing up uh, his. Uh, his, his uh, tour. Um, we're hoping uh, at some point, either uh, the first or second meeting in March, we're going to uh, invite Amoresco to come in. Um, we had to wait on some uh, transformers to come in, which there was a delay. Uh, they're in, they're being installed. So uh, we're anticipating having a full Amoresco um, performance uh, and um, solar panel update for the entire board and the community. Uh, so we should have everything up and running. Uh, hopefully in the next 30 to 60 days, knock wood. So it's not something that, you know, through COVID and everything else over the years, this is something that we have, uh, you know, been installing at all of the schools just with the logistics of everything. And obviously COVID put us a little bit behind schedule and a couple of issues with Central Hudson on some old equipment that they had to swap out. Uh, so we're hoping to have everything finalized and done and up and running uh, for a board presentation for next month. Question, Trustee McFarland, in your presentation, can you also add I don't if they're a hundred percent electric, and if they are, if they are, how did they transition over? If you could give us like a timeline of how they transition over, if the locations that you currently went to a hundred percent electric, or if they're not a hundred percent electric, uh, how they're actually using using the uh, propane. Um, Petro buses, gas compared to the electric, like what type of routes and what's the price? Just different sure, things like I'll that. Definitely. If, uh, if I'll, I'll, I'll give you charging rates and all. Yeah, the other you, I know you said you're doing fact finding. Yeah, and so right you now, can again, that. I'm, I'm headed to uh, Northern Mass tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to visit a school district while I'm up there, and then I'm headed to Vermont after that, and I'll visit a because that's a cold climate area, okay. Vermont. So we'll get more more feedback probably a better mileage rate based on cold climate so there so, it seems like there are a, a, a number of districts throughout the country that have converted or are converting over to electric at this time well some districts have just got one or two buses oh so, so it's a okay yeah so they, they're, I, they're I in make the same process excuse me. Excuse me. I, I, all right thank you if people have questions regarding this issue i would suggest you send it to to him because this is not the time i don't think to discuss options I think it's important to raise the questions so we can answer those things at that Thank appropriate you. time. All right, so let's come on with the next level, the next topic, uh, curriculum, Dr. Carwell. Good evening, everyone. Oh, absolutely. I'll send an email to the Capital Committee, which is the best thing to do. Dr. Carwell, I'm sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. That's okay. The Curriculum Committee met on February 8th. President Lumia and Vice President Kellen were in attendance. We had a presentation on the K through two literacy program. Our presenters, which included uh, elementary teachers and our professional uh, developers for ELA and our director of ELA, Jenny Schneller, uh, were uh, present and participated in the presentation. They spoke about the units of study that we are using, as well as the modifications we made with our phonics program this year. We're also um, anticipating having a parent presentation sometime in April on our K-2 literacy program. Any, any questions? Well, I tell you, I was impressed 
by the way kids are being taught to read. As I said at the time meeting, that's not the way I learned, but I tell you, the scientific way that the kids are doing and getting it done is, is exceptional. So uh, I'd like to thank the presenter for what he did. Peggy? Yeah, uh, and I, I too was very impressed. Uh, I like the way you're considering uh, all different uh, modes of learning reading and recognizing that different children learn to read in different, better with different methods and uh, also of providing more academic intervention support. We are looking forward to the presentation, believe me. Thank you. Cheryl, Legislative Action Committee. Yes, the Legislative Action Committee met on February 16th, and we reviewed for the rest of the committee um, the results of our discussion with Assemblyman Bipan from our meeting earlier in the month. Uh, since our meeting with the Assemblyman, he and Senator Rollison have actually introduced a new bill that would... Um, ban a um, mandatory uh, COVID-19 vaccine for children to attend school. So that has, um, has also been um, submitted into the legislature. And like the um, opposite bill from Assemblyman Dinowitz, it's um, in committee. We spent the majority of our time talking about special education legislation and talking about the issue of unilateral placement. And at this time, um, I believe the assemblyman is looking into possibly um, introducing legislation that would put some guidelines on um, unilateral placement to try to help out districts. And I will be meeting with Mr. Zip to gather some information for that. We're gonna be meeting in March and um, Mr. McFarland is going to be updating us on the, um, the EV school bus issue at that time. Go. A policy, Peggy? Yes, the policy committee met on February 1st and uh, board members, uh, Don Lumia, Keith Odoms, Harry Johnson, and myself were present, as was Assistant Superintendent Darren Lokema and District Clerk Alberta Pedro. Uh, we continued, uh, as a matter of fact, we finished our three year re review of the policies. Uh, the changes you will see in the uh, agenda for approval are uh, or are basically uh, some grammatical changes, just something to bring uh, us up to date with current administrative practice and uh, suggestions from the state for clarification. One policy is being eliminated. That's because the policy is already uh, covered in another policy. Mm -hmm. That being said, uh, Dutch School, uh, County School Board Association, once again, Peggy. Yes. The, the Dutchess County School Boards Association met on on February 2nd. Uh, I was the end. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Bonk was also in attendance. Uh, the discussion was again about the Dutchess uh, Community College charging tuition for classes given in our schools and by our teachers. Uh, there, um, there is a, a push for either the county legislature or the state legislature to provide this money so that children who are in high school should not should get free education in all aspects. Uh, and then Robin Green, Robbie Green uh, from the Mid Hudson Study Council uh, presented a, made a presentation for uh, what they were doing. And last but not least, uh, Mike. Uh, Mike. 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 Hello, everybody. <laughs> First of all, but before that, big purposes, I'd like to thank Peggy Kellen, Marie Johnson, and Dr. Bunk for going all to Albany to advocate for this district. With that being said, Peggy, you want to make some comments on that? Okay. Uh, February, February 15th. Um, uh, 
Marie and Johnson and I went to with uh, the Dutchess County School Boards Association uh, on Lobby Day in Albany, and Dr. Bonk came with us. Uh, he was the only superintendent from Dutchess County who was there, and uh, he was there all day, and <laughs> as we were. So uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes uh, other districts uh, could only be there part of the day. Wampingers was the only district that was there all day long. So in some cases, we advocated on behalf of other districts in addition to our own. Uh, we started off by meeting with Dee Dee Barrett's staff. Uh, Dee Dee herself uh, came in on the end of it. She had been uh, 15 hours, she said, at a committee, a committee meeting. Uh, horrendous. Uh, then we went uh, to Rob Rollison's office. Uh, again, um, he, he was on, uh, he was not able to meet with us, but we went, met with his staff. Uh, Anil Beepam met with us in person. His schedule matched ours. And uh, then we met with Michelle Hinchy's staff. The, uh, we advocated for uh, free, uh, for universal pre-K, universal um, uh, lunches and uh, some of the other things we pushed were uh, improving the fund balance uh, needs of the districts so that we wouldn't be in the position of having to uh, get in such a narrow uh, aspect uh, with uh, New York as the only state that uh, has limits on fund balance for school districts uh, that are uh, as extreme as ours. Eight have Eight are the only for, um, 42 states don't have any limits, and New York has a, a situation where it has to be between 2% and 4%, which doesn't work when you have a sudden changes in uh, a situation as we did during the pandemic. Then uh, we also advocated for special ed and uh, for more flexibility and for uh, complete funding by the state uh, of uh, the share of uh, that they had been paying. There was some talk of them cutting back on the uh, percentage that they give toward uh, uh, special, special district schools. Uh, Marie, would you like to add? Be before Marie adds, I was just wondering whether that's a bunk. Did anybody give the hook that that's a bunk during that uh, presentation? Oh, let, me, let me. Okay, so um, <laughs> we, Marie, we were. Where's Marie? Uh, we we uh, we allow. We begged. We begged Dr. Bonk to be able to lead us off. We we were actually very strong as Dutchess County School Boards Association uh, went in there. We had Dutchess County uh, BOCES with us. We had Poughkeepsie School District with us. Beacon. Arlington, us, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Spack and Kill. Um, and we were all there, and we also had um, Kelly Lappin from the School Board uh, School Boards Association there. And we had Dr. Bonk lead us off in each office because he truly is our most dynamic speaker. And from my understanding, the only superintendent that was in attendance during lobby day, which was very, imp a lot of people were very impressed over that, that um, we dragged him out of his office, kicking and screaming to come up there with us. Um, it was very impactful because they were able to get a point of view from him. And I do want to thank Dr. Bonk for all of his guidance. I want to thank uh, Ms. Kellen for helping guide me through. She's been to quite a few of these in the past. It was my first, um, hopefully not my last, um, that I was able to go to. We did advocate. Um, they were about three years ago. They kind of threw back on us of out of districts is what it was. It's an 18% that got thrown back onto the districts um, about three years ago, but it's been a temporary thing, and we're hoping to try and get them to take it back to state funding it, um, which would be 18% that they would take back that funding, and it's in the special ed. It's only on out-of-district placements. It's not in-district placements uh, for special education. But still, we have a very large special ed um, budget 
Um, it is needed because we have a lot of children with those needs and through the pandemic, our numbers, I know I believe they were somewhere around 1,700 and they've gone up to over 2,200 or was it? 1850 and then and then we have the preschool and stuff as well um, so we do have a large special ed need in our in our district and a lot of it has been increased due to the pandemic um, we did touch on electric vehicles uh, there was a lot of things that were brought up because there is a tight timeline that the uh, Albany put down and we're trying to let them know that there needs to be more flexibility because there is power companies that are involved that we have to make sure that the power structure and grid is uh, capable. There was a lot of things that we brought up that made several of them, I believe chiefs of staff, uh, raised their eyebrow going, wow, never thought of it in that in that manner. Um, we also advocated for, I believe it was the tax cap as well, to increase the tax cap that has been put on to us. Um, the fund balance limitations, the universal uh, free meals, to bring that back full time. And also the universal pre-K, uh, Ms. Kellen was very good on that one as well. Dr. Bowen, would you like to add anything to what these two ladies? Oh, oh wait, and, and, and I have to say, we did have a hook person. It was Gully. And in our last, in our last meeting, um, the chief of staff was uh, gracious with us. And she was definitely laughing because we brought the comedy show of Gully Sanford and Dwight Bonk. And it was actually quite entertaining. Um, they were feeding off of each other, but they both brought a lot of stuff to the table. Dr. the bot, I, I, so I'll, I'll be able to use the hook. I mean, I might get the hook if I if I speak too long. Um, I would also like to thank Vice President Kelland and, and Trustee Johnson um, for all of their upper efforts uh, up in Albany, and um, and I can say with confidence um, that we've been able to convey uh, our feelings and our needs to Assemblyman Beefen, to Senator Rollison, and to Assemblywoman uh, Barrett. They they were we're all very, very receptive. Uh, I've spoken with them numerous times in regards to the issues that we see here in Wappingers and how we want to move this district forward and how we're going to need the help of New York State. And I will say they were all very, very well versed on the issues. So I want to thank them for that. And I want to thank them on their time. And, and, and one of the areas that um, that I uh, was particularly interested in had to do with providing grants to schools school districts, uh, as opposed to a one time, this is the money that you have in your budget, it needs to be spent by June 30th, use it or lose it. It's very difficult to plan and have any sustainability when you're on a roller coaster year to year with the types of funds that you're going to get. In some instances, it might require a school district to remain status quo of fear of adding anything to the budget, um, fearing that you might not be able to continue with the next year, which is why uh, I am glad to hear that there are some considerations to grants, whether they come from the New York State Education Department, New York State Department of Labor, New York State Department of Health, whatever it is, we're doing a myriad of things for our communities now more than ever after the uh, return of the pandemic. And I want to make mention of one of these grants, which uh, we were awarded. It was actually awarded to our partners at Dutchess County BOCES, and we will be working with them on an industrial industrial manufacturing technician program that will start in a couple of weeks. Again, a grant. And these are things that we have an opportunity to know the amount of funding. We have a fixed period of time over the course of one year or more, hopefully more or more, that we can spend this. So we can develop programs that are sustainable, that we can evaluate, that we make sure make a difference in the lives of our students and prepare them 
for tomorrow's jobs. Uh, I think one of the messages that we attempted to get across, and I think that the uh, state representatives have heard it, uh, I've certainly heard it from business. I had an opportunity to attend the Dutchess County Regional Chamber of Commerce Legislative uh, Action Committee breakfast. Trustee Morgan was there as a member, and I, along with um, superintendents from uh, various school districts in the county, had an opportunity to talk about the importance of working together with business. It's got to be business, education, and government working together to provide our students with the skills needed to be successful. If we're able to do that, that means that businesses are going to be able to remain in Dutchess County. That means that our students are going to get gainful employment, and they're going to be able to support themselves and be able to support their families and our community. So we're all in this together in the interest of time. Before I get the hook, as I'm sure I see people getting ready, I see hook. Uh, I will conclude my comments, but I also want to, uh, and I don't normally do this, but in the interest of time here, uh, I want to uh, echo the comments that were made here by all of the board members. I would, I would generally say these things myself, but in the areas of athletics, scholastics, theater, um, all of the great things that we do, all of the opportunities that we provide our kids. I want to thank all of our students for just doing a phenomenal job in what area, and I also want to thank our advisors and our coaches for their phenomenal leadership. It's greatly appreciated. And with that, I think I will go into the um, budget presentation, which is extremely similar to the presentation that I that I gave two weeks ago. Not much has changed, but I do want to uh, take an opportunity to go through that with everybody, and I will do it very briefly. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Lokima. Okay, so in the interest of time, and again, I would like to thank everyone. As you know, we moved this meeting up uh, as we speak. Uh, the forecast is indicating that snow is expected to begin falling within the next hour. So we certainly wanted to have this meeting and get it in many important items to address. So this is the budget presentation, too. Last year, we reconnected with the community. This year, we're moving forward together. There's the members of the Board of Education and the senior staff. You know who they are. Keywords in the budget process. I went through this at the last presentation. The 23-24 budget and the current educational climate. I went through that as well. I do want to reiterate that we know that the consumer price index or the CPI is 8%. Since the CPI exceeds 2%, the district will utilize 2% in the tax cap formula, which means that the maximum allowable tax levy increase in our district is 2.05%. However, as I indicated before, for the second time since the inception of the tax cap in 2010, uh, I anticipate that the recommended budget that will be presented to the board will come in under the 2.05. We're looking at a tax levy increase of about 1.85%, which again is 0 0.20 less than the allowable tax levy increase. What does it include? The reinstatement of foundation aid, UPK funding remains stable, and obviously we're budgeting using the full governor's executive budget proposal. Will that be the same proposal in the state budget? Might be, might not be. That will be determined um, by the uh, state legislature. And again, we are hoping that we will have an adopted state budget on April the 1st. Um, so we expect to be able to provide budget updates at the April 11th board meeting. Some of the factors and challenges, this I didn't go into detail, but I did reference it. 
and special education increased classification and the need for services starting in 2021 going forward. It continues again as we return from the pandemic. We are seeing students with many, many, many needs. Some of them we did not see three years ago. Instructional program. We need to support the educational needs of all students. We need to address the learning loss that has occurred over the last couple of years during the pandemic. Enrollment, elementary enrollment growing slightly in the district. Secondary enrollment continues to decline. Overall, our enrollment is down slightly. We talked about student health and wellness awareness and strategies, support students and staff tax cap uh we've talked about that balance a budget within the parameters of the tax cap and again we're looking to come in under that tax cap state aid that's how we develop our budget based on the preliminary projections foundation aid uh, obviously has been changed and of course the calculation for cpi eight percent we're all paying more for everything that we need eight percent is the cpi and why that's going to be relevant, I will discuss with you in a moment. And then, of course, we have the federal funds that are allocated. Not much, but some. Developing projected budgets based on feedback from vendors, historical data, and municipal input. Again, I've talked about this before. How do we build a budget? Through salaries, contracts, supplies, BOCES, and benefits. Now, here's where that CPI number, as much as we don't like it, it's a reality. We all face it. We're looking at a tax levy increase as of today, and this could change tomorrow, but I think it's going to be in this ballpark of a tax levy to levy increase of 1.85%. That translates into a budget to budget increase of 7.53%, which is under the CPI as it has been in years before. So this budget increase, 7.53% is under CPI. Again, you have to look at what you and I and all of us are paying for goods and services. They're astronomically high. We as a school district also have to pay that for the goods and services that we need. So where do we go from here? March 27th, recommended budget presentation one. April 11th, state aid update. Superintendents recommended budget two. We hope to, uh, we hope that the board adopts the budget on the 17th of April, community forum on May the 8th, and then the budget vote on May the 16th. And again, I wanna thank the community for all of your support now more than ever as we move forward together. And with that, Ms. Crandall, you want to go right into the bus proposition? If you'd like. Why don't you, please? Okay, wonderful. In the interest of time. Sure. Could I have the mic? You certainly can. Do you want the mic? Before we go to Ms. Crandall, are there any questions on the part of the board on the presentation? Could we do them all once it's concluded? I'm sorry? Can we have all the questions once we conclude both presentations? Uh, okay. I, I think we should have it. Any questions right now on any questions on part of the board on this particular? I have attempted to get. Do you have any questions on the budget as of right now? No. No. No questions that she can hear from the table. Any questions? No. Okay, they said no. Case, you're, you're next. Thank you, sir. Good evening. So thank you very much for taking the opportunity this evening to have this conversation about the bus proposition for the 23-24 school year. Again, this is a, a abbreviated conversation, but it will also be piggybacking off of some of the information that Trustee McFarland did share because we have been doing that research into electric vehicles and what that may look like for a district where we have 260 vehicles on the road almost every single day. The first uh, slide that we'd like to share is always what the current fleet looks like, the different types of vehicles that we have driven by our bus drivers every single day in order to meet the needs of our students, and they vary in age, but they are all certified to transport students daily. 
As we jump right into the conversation about electric vehicles for the dis largest district owned fleet in New York State, we have many questions. We have questions on the infrastructure. What does the electrical grid need? We're working with Central Hudson as well as with International Corporation, which is a bus company, to uh, have a review of our facilities. We understand the purchase and the installation of charging units would have to happen both at the compounds as well as at the school buildings. And what will that look like? Um, possible enclosures due to weather, temperature, et cetera. These are all things that we're just making sure that we have conversations about to make sure that we are doing this transitional plan the most effective way possible. Uh, safety concerns with regard to batteries, drivability and the weather conditions, as well as mechanical and technical systems. Uh, what is the efficiency, run length? Uh, we do have the ninth northeast climate. Uh, we also have terrain on this end of the district and the south side. Um, training for mechanics, training for our bus drivers, training for our head bus drivers. The cost right now, there are grants, we understand that, but the cost is currently three to four times of what a, a diesel-fueled vehicle would be. Um, and there are rebates available, uh, but approximately $450,000 for a 71-passenger vehicle at this time. Charging stations, electric and general fund, the electric general fund budget, we understand that will increase significantly. Of course, the diesel line would then decrease, but you know, there is an offset. We want to make sure we evaluate all of that. Um, what will it look like in our lots? Having our lots, the infrastructure, meet that infrastructure need, we have questions. Will we need additional vehicles? Will we need to have additional lots? those type of questions, but we continue to do that work. Professor Broas, or Professor, Professor Broas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Director Broas, so sorry. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, Director Broas has the opportunity to tour a, <laughs> to tour a plant um, of electric vehicles down south in April. He's going to take that opportunity. We've been attending many webinars. Uh, a lot of them are, are funded by NYSERDA um, to try to get that information. Uh, Supervisor Rivera from Transportation was just up in Albany last week, he gathered a lot of information. So um, we're really just trying to gather what we can, have the conversation, and do it the best way possible for our students, for our bus drivers, and for all of our community. Moving on to the prop for this school year coming up, we are looking to replace 18 vehicles, 10 large buses, and 8 vans. As you can see, the vans have more miles and younger age, that's because they are usually what are used out of district or to do those out of feeder type programs. So the large buses have a longer, uh, an older life and fewer miles. But this is based, this replacement plan is based on what our district is, need, is in need of right now. So we are looking to purchase 1071 passenger buses at $147,993. Should be interested to note that's about $26,000 more than last year just for a diesel bus. Um, so that, again, indicates your supply chain concerns and issues. Uh, 28 passenger vans, we're looking to purchase eight of those. Those are gasoline powered. The prop we are asking for is for 18 vehicles totaling $2,135,927. This prop is $77,641 less than last year's prop, which is approximately $148 less when we use the revolving bus um, bus bond anticipation note for that purpose. So we always look at what factors. How do we make these decisions? How do we move forward? A lot of these remain the same from year to year. We want to make sure we're, we look at our, the safety of our fleet. We look at the age. We look at the fiscal responsibility. We make sure that we're not keeping vehicles on the road that cost more to fix than to actually utilize. So we try to do that as smart as possible. We look at our enrollment. As Dr. Bonk had indicated, we do see an enrollment shift. We want to make sure we're being responsible as in that area as well. We talked about the electric fleet, and we also talked about the needs aligned with the New York State mandates and requirements as per individual education plans. I know we went through this very quickly, but I do thank you for your time, and I'm available for questions. While we're... Uh, 
waiting for Mr. Lumian to come back. I'll just shoot out mine. Um, Ms. Crandall, I'd like to just verify for everyone out there, we are not purchasing any electric vehicles as of this time. We're just doing investigative work correct we are not looking to include any electric vehicles in the proposition for 23 24 as we do not have the infrastructure in order to be able to support them so if we were to purchase one and not use it, it seems like a little bit of waste of, of taxpayer dollars I, I agree i just wanted to verify so that people don't con get confused when they look at the the uh the whole presentation online there there we're not purchase it's not that we're against them we're trying to do the full work and mr mcfarland's been doing a, a big chunk of it and i want to thank him for that and helping you and mr bro us out I have a question. Cheryl, do you have a question? Yes, I also want to um, clarify for the people out there um, and have you reiterate from my understanding that this proposition would not increase what's in the budget year to year for school buses and might actually be just a very, very slight savings. You are 120% correct. Thank you, Trustee Miggins. I have a question. Keith. Because the price went up per bus of, of approximately $26,000, is there any way, I know we're going to repeat this next year, any way we could kind of hedge uh, purchases of buses for next year or purchase additional because we know the price will increase? Sure. So um, in prior years, we've asked for 21 or 23 vehicles to be replaced. You'll see if you take that 26000 and multiply it out, it comes to almost the difference in the prop price. So unfortunately, there's not a reserve for bus proposition purchases or else, Mr. Odom, that's a fantastic idea. Um, so not but if we were to budget for it and not utilize it, then we would get a potential comment and then that money would fall to fund balance and then we could potentially have another comment on fund balance. So it kind of there's not having a reserve is a bit restrictive for us in this in this situation. Thank you. Any other questions? Just for my information, that's a big significance between electric buses and electric buses that cost four hundred and fifty thousand per bus. Yes, sir. That's quite a significant jump. Correct, but there are rebates and grants available, um, but it still will cost more net okay. um, at the end. Second, just up on the curiosity, purchase. maybe that's a, Mr. Bros can answer this question or not. We have a bus garage up in uh, Fiskill Plain that cleans buses. We have a bus wash, yes, sir. Does that that help the wear and tear of the buses? Yes, sir. And the bus wash had been used had been used quite frequently. It actually needs to be cleaned, um, and we and it is a hazardous material. The the con the the fluid comes off the bus, so we have to have that tank cleaned out. Um, but we do encourage the drivers in order to be able to get that salt off, in order to be able to get that undercarriage clean, and having the hard paved surfaces for the vehicles to park on has made a significant difference as well with regard to the rest to the undercarriage. All right, 5.03, approval of transportation proposition. Um, Peggy. Resolved that the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District authorizes the submission of the following proposition for the qualified voters of the district to vote on at the annual district meeting, budget vote and election to be held on May 16th, 2023. Shall the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District, Putnam and Dutchess Counties, New York District, be authorized to purchase student transportation vehicles at a maximum established estimated sum of two million one hundred and thirty five thousand nine hundred twenty seven dollars and said amount or so much thereof as may be necessary shall be raised by the levy of a tax upon the taxable property of the district and collected in annual installments as provided by law Law and for which obligations of the district may be issued. Motion. Maurice, second. Cheryl, all in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. Uh, thank you, uh, Michelle. Thank you for your, your presentation. Michelle. 
<laughs> Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> well done, Miss Dainty. Thank you very much. I can't get Miss Dainty. Thank you, Miss Dainty, for your fantastic presentation. Dainty. Okay. <laughs> 6.01 consent agenda. Does anybody want to remove anything from the consent agenda? Yes. Okay, Marie. I'd like to remove 6.03, item number five, line H. Line H? Yes. Okay, Peggy. Resolved that the Board of Education does hereby approve the following consent agenda items as stated. 6.02, 6.03, except item number 5, line 8. 6.04, H, H, <laughs> I can't even read my writing. and 6.13. Motion. Marie, second, Cheryl. All those in favor? Unanimous 6.03 line item H number five six one three line for number five line item H. Resolved that the item number five line H 2022-2023 spring coaching appointments be approved as recommended by the superintendent of schools. Motion, Marie, second. All right, all in all in favor. Opposed? Marie? Okay, motion carries. Uh, okay, next, next topic. Oh my God. 701. Oh my yes. God. Okay. I think Peggy's going to need not oxygen for the next one. Go ahead. 7.01. Resolution of proven tax exemption for volunteer firemen and ambulance workers. Take it in part. Take it in Texas. Do you want somebody to do it? She can do it. She's still doing it. Not look. Whereas New York Real Property Tax Law RPT. L 866A provides for a partial exemption from taxation on real property owned by qualified volunteer firefighters and volunteer ambulance workers or a qualified spouse of up to 10% of the assessed value of such property if so determined by a governing body of a city, village, town, school district, fire district, or county after a public hearing subject to the conditions set forth in RPTL 466A. And whereas RPTL 466A requires that a minimum service requirement for each applicant be set between two years of service and five years of service, and whereas the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District, school district desires to adopt the resolution providing a partial tax exemption on real property used as the primary residence of and owned by qualified volunteer firefighters and volunteer ambulance workers or their qualified spouse in accordance with the provisions of RPTL 466A. And whereas a public hearing was held in accordance with RPTL L 466A. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education as follows. Section 1. Grant of exemption. Residential real property owned by an enrolled member of an incorporated volunteer fire company, volunteer fire department, or incorporated volunteer ambulance service shall be exempt from taxation and assessments levied by the school district to the extent
percent of 10 percent of the assessed value of such property, exclusive of special assessments, subject to the requirements set forth in this resolution. Section 2, Eligibility. Such exemption shall not be granted unless A. The applicant resides in the school district, which is served by such incorporated volunteer fire company, volunteer fire department, or incorporated voluntary ambulance service. B. The property is the primary residence of the applicant. C. The property is used exclusively for residential purposes. Provided, however, that if any portion of such property is not used exclusively for the applicant's residence, but is used for other purposes, such portion shall be subject to taxation, and the remaining portion only shall be entitled to the exemption provided by this resolution. And D, the applicant has been certified by the authority having jurisdiction for the incorporated volunteer chair fire company, fire department, or voluntary ambulance service as an enrolled member who has served such incorporated volunteer fire company, fire department, or voluntary ambulance service for at least two years. The applicant must submit such certification together with the tax exemption application. Section 3, Grant of Lifetime Exemption. Any enrolled member of an incorporated volunteer fire company, fire department, or incorporated voluntary ambulance service who accrues more than 20 years of active service and is so certified by the authority having jurisdiction for the incorporated volunteer fire company, fire department, or incorporated voluntary ambulance service shall be granted the 10% exemption authorized by this resolution for the remainder of his or her life as long as his or her primary residence is located within the school district. Section 4. Unremarried spouses of volunteer firefighters or volunteer ambulance workers killed in the line of duty. The property tax exemption authorized by this resolution and granted to an enrolled member of an incorporated volunteer fire company, fire department, or incorporated voluntary ambulance service shall, upon application, be continued to such deceased enrolled members unremarried spouse if such member is killed in the line of duty, provided that A. Such unremarried spouse is certified by the authority having jurisdiction for the incorporated volunteer fire company, fire department, or incorporated voluntary ambulance service as an unremarried spouse of such enrolled member who was killed in the line of duty. B. Such deceased volunteer had been an enrolled member for at least five years. And C. Such deceased volunteer had been receiving the exemption prior to his or her death. Section 5. Unremarried spouses of deceased volunteer, fire, volunteer firefighters or volunteer ambulance workers. The property tax exemption authorized by this resolution and granted to an enrolled member of an incorporated volunteer fire company, fire department, or incorporated voluntary ambulance service shall, upon application, be continued to such deceased enrolled members' unremarried spouse, provided that a. Such unremarried spouse is certified by the authority having jurisdiction for the incorporated volunteer fire to company, fire department, or incorporated voluntary ambulance service as an unremarried spouse of said enrolled of such enrolled member. B. Such deceased volunteer had been an enrolled member for at least 20 years. And C. Such deceased volunteer, an unremarried remarried spouse had been receiving the exemption for such property prior to the death of such volunteer. Section 6. Application. Application for such exemption shall be filed with the assessor or on or before the taxable status date of each year on a form as presented by New York State.
Section 7. Peggy, Section 7, you won't be able to read it because it's all messed up. Okay. So I've gotten it for you right here. <laughs> Thank you. Stop right here. <laughs> Section 7. No diminu diminu dim diminution of benefits. No applicant who is a volunteer firefighter or volunteer ambulance worker who by reason of such status is receiving any benefit under the provisions of Article 4 of the State Real Property Tax Law on the effective date of this resolution shall suffer any diminution of such benefit because of the provisions of this resolution. Section 8. This resolution shall take effect immediately. Well, thank you, first of all, for that fantastic reading. <laughs> <laughs> Motion, Marie, second, Cheryl, any discussion? All in favor, unanimous, thank God. <laughs> before, uh, Alberta, thank you. Thanks. By the way, before we go on, I'd like to congratulate all members of the WFW yes. for ratifying their new contract. I want to thank specifically. I want to thank specifically Renee Harris and the president of the union, as well as all the people working with him. Uh, it's president of the union, Sir, Sir, uh, Tom Serencioni, for their hard work in making this happen. So once again, congratulations. I'm glad this is over and done with. So thank you. And with that being said, I, uh, uh, I, uh, I, uh, 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 provided it's a, it's a short, otherwise it will be short. <laughs> I would also like to thank uh, Director of Human Resources, uh, Renee Harris, uh, and members of the negotiating team for all of their efforts. Also the executive board of the Wappingers Federation of Workers for, uh, for an excellent negotiation uh, period. And um, I believe that this agreement represents the best of the district and the best of the WFW you. So thank you again, Wappingers Federation of Workers, for all that you do for our district. And Ms. Harris, thanks to you and the Department of Human Resources and the negotiating team for coming up with this fine agreement. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. 7.03, approval. 7.02, where is that? Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I got my own. I, I agree, wait a minute, that's why That's why I like my, hold on a minute, please. no problem. Yeah, no. I might, yeah, I'll be okay. Guess what? I'm, I'm ready. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Seven point oh two. Thank you very much. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 what is that? Is that going to two hundred okay. font? Oh, what? no, that you went the wrong way. I'm oh, sorry. I had a quick one there. 7.02, new course approval, uh, studio art, studio art, five minutes. Resolved that the Board of Education does hereby approve the following new course, studio and art, digital art for the 2023-2024 school year as detailed in the information provided. Motion. Motion. Mr. McFarland. Second. Second discussion. Cheryl. Yes, I think it's wonderful that this course can be implemented without any impact on the budget, that we have teachers who are ready to teach it, that we have other courses that it can replace. And I also want to say that this is a very timely addition because over the last several years, most of the students that I have met from the district who are going on to fine arts programs at colleges who are not performing arts are looking for digital art careers and I think this is going to give them a basis of knowledge that they can build on when they're in college so they're not starting a step behind their classmates. Any other comments? This particular course, I tell you, I read the entire packet. It's a long packet. I think it's an asset to the students. Visual arts, it's a thing of the future and I think it's extremely important that we prepare our students for future. So I uh, congratulate to the, student, the teachers who put this forward, and I'm, I'm happy for the students will be able to participate in such a fantastic course. With that being said, can we vote? Can we vote? Absolutely. All in favor? 
Unanimous. I assume everybody's going to vote for this. Crazy not to. That's a bunk. No, no. I have no further comments. <laughs> 7.03, approval to attend the Chambers of Commerce 40 Under 40 Award Ceremony. Resolved that the Board of Education does hereby approve the following board members to attend the Dutchess County Regional Chamber of Commerce 40 Under 40 Mover and Shaker Awards to honor W.C. Uh, Wapcher Central School District employee Melanie Pagano on Thursday, April 27, 2023, 6.30 p.m. at the Change Point Theater, 260 Mill. Street, Poughkeepsie, New York, at a cost of $55 registration fee plus mileage and parking as per board president. Uh, John Lumia. Before, before we approve this particular resolution, I believe there are. He said, I think she, well, I want to put, put, uh, read all the names, if you don't mind. I believe uh, we can have other board members listed in this particular resolution. So before she reads the entire resolution, there are two people there, namely myself and Peggy. Are there anybody board member who wants to attend this particular ceremony? So please list the name of John, John Morgan. Who else? Cheryl Miggitz. Yes. Okay, I'll Mary Johnson. Awesome. Anybody else? Mary McCure. Mary McCure. I was going to say that. All right, you got all the names up. So, all right, in that case. Uh, all right, uh, John Lumia, board president. Peggy Kellen, board vice president. John Morgan, board trustee. Marie Johnson, board trustee. And Cheryl Miggitz, board trustee. Motion. Marie, second. Cheryl, all those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, 7.04, second reading of adoption, uh, and adoption of policies. Resolved that the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District hereby approves the second reading of and adopts the following policies based upon the first reading by the Board and the recommendation of the Policy Committee as stated. Motion. So, Marie, second, Cheryl, all in favor? Unanimous. Uh, where are we? I forgot. Uh, 7.05. Approval to retire policy 2700, board staff communications. Yes, as I uh, as I said before, uh, this is incorporated into another policy. Resolved that the Board of Education does hereby retire policy 22700, board staff communications, as paragraph four of this policy was incorporated into policy 2342, and the remaining text in the policy is deemed un non-essential as recommended by the school district attorney and the members of the policy committee. Motion, uh, Peggy. Second, Marie. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, 8.01. Board members may request additional agenda items. Are there any board members yes. want to it? Yes. Yes. 8.02. Go ahead. Motion. Um, yep. Uh, well, we have to vote on that. I'm sorry. I second. Okay. All in favor? All in favor? Yes. 8.03. Yes. 8.03. Yes. 8.03, short-term suspension appeals, be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby confirms the findings of fact and penalty recommendation of the superintendent of schools dated 2-14-23, which endorsed the findings and penalty of the principal dated 2-10-23 regarding student number 1003235 and be it further resolved that the Board of President is hereby authorized to sign the Board Determination Letter on behalf of the Board of Education, and be it further resolved that the District Clerk is hereby authorized to mail the Board Determination Letter to the student's parents. Motion, Marie, second, Peggy, all those in favor, unanimous. 9.01. Comments from the public. Are there any comments from the public? Are there? Uh, I guess. Uh, aye, 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 aye. Was, what was it? So 
Uh, yeah, one, one comment from Lisa Salaj. Uh, put the other put, put the phone, put the microphone on. Okay. Hi, good evening. My name's Lisa Salaj. Still can't hear you. Still? My name's Lisa Salaj. I've been a district so employee. Still can hear you. Hold on a minute, please. Right. Sorry. Nobody can. Turn off your mic. <laughs> okay. My name is Lisa Slage. I've been an employee with Wappingers for 32 years. 30 of it bus driver, last two years courier. I'm the courier rep and I have a spot on the executive board. And we just, the Wappingers Federation of Workers, on behalf of them, we want to thank the school board, the superintendent, Dr. Bonk. Renee Harris and the school district's negotiating team on a great contract. We appreciate it and thank you and safe travels tonight getting home. And thank you for recognizing us. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.